Anyway, the head of the gang stalkers uh, was nice to me. He said, I had recognized it when I was just, had natural singing within me that happened to be exactly what he recognized in the, in the call to prayer and everything else. Interestingly enough, he had a wife who was a Christian, but she was kind of a churchy Christian, sort of like a TBN type of Christian, you know what I mean? Not, you know, obviously, uh, or she wouldn't have been gang stalking me. You know, they all were, the whole neighborhood, you know. So we, I said, we're going to sell. He goes, well, I may put the evil eye on it so you, you won't sell. You'll be stuck there. And he was laughing, you, you know, like I'd have to go bankrupt. And, he, and I'm like, this is not a friend here. He really wants to engineer it so that we can't sell it. So, you know, it's so funny. The Lord said, put it on at this price. It's like, but Lord, that's under the market. You know, put it, you know, and then, and then that same day that it was listed, there was a bidding war, and it took it right up to the market price. Closed in one month, boom, gone. Isn't that something? I prayed to the Lord to what to do. I didn't know what to do. We were, you know, the Lord said, you got to move. You can't stay here. It's getting worse and worse. The vans are pulling up, strange, you know what I mean? Uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, people just kind of walking in and out of the house, you know, moving things around. I, I don't even know. You know, it's the same typical stuff you hear in the gang stalking world. But, I mean, it was, you know, more and more and more piling on. And you wonder, was it going to become a big event? Like, there'd be a big, you know, a big, uh, this is so weird. It was, on the other side there, is there a market? Like, is there a board that you guys look at? Like a big board? Is there a big thing of everybody kind of keeps track of what's happening with whom and you watch it on closed circuit TV, like you got it all wired up with all the cameras, you know, where they go, what they do. And it's like, yeah, we've got closed circuit TV. We've got, uh, we got gambling going on. You, you're gambling on us? Definitely. Did you know that gang stalking people that you were gambled on to see who could get through the gauntlet who wouldn't? Oh, yeah. Gambling, yes, they do gamble. It's like a big game, and there's a board, and there's there's gambling, and there's organization, there's money flowing, and there's there's setups that happen, like you know your wife, your 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 house, your 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 job, your your car, your all prearranged, right? And then gambling, and then you know the wife is in the know. She's leave, leaving a. A double life because she's there when she steps off set and she's, um, you know, got her lovers and her things going on. And they talk about you like a thing, like the show, like I got to get back and get back in, in character. How many of those going on? Wouldn't you like to know? A lot. An awful lot. And yes, they... They live in another dimension, and they're, the, you know, the, the, they look like the people that you knew before, but they're not. And they're like aliens, you know, and they're here gambling on what you're going to do. See, they like to predict what you'll do. They'll do something, and then they're going to bet on what reaction you're going to have to it. And they do. They bet. I'm serious. I'm being... You never got... You never heard that before? It's a, that's a big thing. It, that, that gambling there is a big, 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 big market. They bet on, they all know you. The whole city knows who you are because they're betting on you. You remember in the Truman Show when they were all in the bar watching the show on TV and they were just betting on whether he'd get out or not? That's the ticket. And that's it. That's it. That's how they all know you. When you walk up to people, they go, oh, I know you, because they're watching you on TV. That's how they know you. But it's in another dimension. It's just hard to explain. But yes, they know you. And then no, they don't. But yes, they do. It's, it's just, <laughs> if you don't have this knowledge that I've got, understood, I mean, not having it raw, but I mean, just understand it. There is another world, Okay. There is another world abutting this one, or in, intermixed with this one. There is a place they go. Not all of them. They don't have the status. You've got to be kind of, you know, special, elite or whatever. But they do have a whole network like that. 
of ranking, high to low, right? They do have soldiers out there, they got people, they got, you know, uh, and there's just a few, I guess, what do you call them, pure hearts, people that don't know anything, but just like what's on the surface or what they've been presented, the sun comes up, the sun goes down. I think Paul McCartney had a, he, he had disdain for this fool on the hill, he writes fool on the hill, maybe he was writing about himself, I don't know. But in a way, it's the, the kind of attitude he has, is the kind of attitude they have toward people that are not in the know, or people that are pure hearts, or people that don't know what's going on. They just call them fools or babies, you know, taking candy from a baby or whatever. And then every once in a while, there's one that really is going to fight it, you know, and you're fighting, and they say, well, you're fighting the whole world. It's like, no, you're fighting an entire dimension, not just a world, worlds. And yes, they, they know who they're betting on. Like those people in the bar, they're watching Truman. They don't know Truman personally. But what if Truman was, you know, trying to figure out what's real and what's not, and he ran into one of them, and they, they act very familiar. Oh, how you doing? And that made Truman paranoid, and he ran back into his house and hid for a while, because how could that stranger out there know something personal about Truman? Now you're getting it, huh? How oh, indeed. <laughs> it's because there's another world, and they do anything to, to make sure you don't know about that world. And from that world, call it the alien dimension, if you will, um, you know, comes all the manipulation, whatever, and the, the, the job is, first of all, you got to keep them separated. You never knew what that song meant? Well, some of us who are aware understood very painfully what that song was about. Very painful song. You got to keep them separated. That's right. He could be talking about his dogs, he could be talking about that, or he could be talking about this. It just triggered this for me. Who knows what he was talking about? Who knows what he was channeling? Uh, keep them separated. That's right. You keep them separated and, you, and they gamble on what you'll do and not do. But they don't want two of them to get together and figure it out. That would wreck the game. And the whole thing got exposed. That would be the end of it because it's all constructed, you know, it's invisible, actually, in a sense, but in a sense it isn't. It's very strange. If I were them, I would not be playing footsie with this thing, playing fast and loose with the devil uh, and his dimension. But yes, okay, that's the same dimension of the occult and aliens and all that. So the people now are really coming from that dimension. They're not the people that were here born, went to school with, all that, they're not the same. It's now, now you're in an interdimensional world and um, every day is another dimension for you and they're manipulating it to see what you'll do and they're gambling on it and perfect strangers come up to you and say they know who you are because they, they see you on TV. They're gambling, they're betting, they're hoping you, you know, solve it. Most of what they bet on is will you give in and become one of them, have your eyes open, and then when your eyes are open, you see all everything I'm describing. And then you cease being a fool, as Paul McCartney wrote about. Or the Beatles, or whatever. Uh, or, a, or a bulldog. The Beatles had bulldog. That's like, uh, whatever. Just someone that doesn't know what's happening, you know, because this, this whole world's going on, and there's somebody that's just blind to it, and, and it's getting pushed around, and bullied, and having a hard time, you know, being un not connected to it. And uh, they bet on whether you're going to, like, wise up and do the right thing, which in their mind is, of course, you know, taking the cup and drinking, right? Taking the deal that's offered. Uh, submitting, self-corrupting, you know, whatever it takes to get in the club, you know, just, just you know, getting wise to it and saying, okay, I've been a fool, you guys, you guys got the inside track, uh, let me in, I'm, I'm with you, I'll do whatever you want, I'll be your slave for a while, whatever. And, uh, and then, you know, it's like, I've been a fool. But the, the, what, 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 what they don't want 
is this idea of the sole survivor. So to fight it, and then they keep fighting it. And then they keep living because of the supernatural protection of God. And, oh my God, that's going to destroy the whole... Yes. Yes. That one that got away. That sole survivor. The very thing that they're deathly afraid of. Because it will pop their little bubble, which is basically just a bubble anyway. It should be popped. And further to all this, that's what the whole story of God and Jesus and the devil and everything, that's what it's all about. It's all about the situation we're talking about. Jesus is the pure heart. You know, not many of us. Jesus is the sole survivor. And in him we survive, don't you see? I mean, you can fight them and survive and they may call you the sole survivor or the destroyer or whatever. They tend to call people that survive in the same destroyers. They tend to think, well, that's the next one that's going to go on a mass shooting. You can't trust them. Right? So there's that, that aspect, too, of gang stalking. And it all ties in with this much bigger picture I've just painted. Now, I've told you the absolute truth. It's bizarre. But they gamble, you know, they figure, well, you know, when one passes through the other side, they usually have a little party or they're all excited and they all, they all take their masks off and come and, you know, give you a hug. You know, welcome. Now get to work, you know. Um, you're one of us now. Awesome. I, I hated lying to you every day. Ah, cool. You finally, you know, pulled your socks up. You really, you know, you, you, you hit it out of the park. You, you figured out what was going on and you, you took care of it. That's a real man. They'll say that. Hey, you got respect, brah. Yeah, they'll say that. When in actuality, truth be told, it's weakness that produces conformity, not courage. <laughs> it's their concept of courage and cowardice is 100% backwards. You see, good people are good people because they stick to a moral compass and they're not going to play games of deception and they're going to try to be honest about their own flesh like you know they'll say well you have needs you have flesh don't you want covering don't you want someone to have your back don't you want to do what you want don't you want to have powers to be somebody don't be the lonesome loser as the little river band put it back in the 70s remember that song it's a famous classic rock song beaten by the Queen of Hearts every time. He's a loser, but he keeps on trying. I mean, God, stop trying already, they will say. Just lay down. Now cry uncle for guys. I don't want to keep hurting you. I want to take my mask off and say, yes, I did hurt you, but you know, now you understand. So welcome. Stop this. And then you realize you're talking about two different worlds and big dimensions, and all the stars, and everything, and everything, and all of it. It's not a little thing. <laughs> I didn't want to, bra. They made me, I'm sorry, but now it's cool, right? Forgive me? You know, you're going to have to do it too. You know, it's hard. I, that's why I was always wanting you to join us. I didn't want you to, you know, to keep lying to you every day, playing a game. I didn't want to do that. I had to. You know, did we really tell lies? We're the ones waiting in the sunshine. <laughs> um, I know, but it's a different world. And it's a actual, it's a thing. You know what I mean? It's a thing that's bigger than all of us. And it is a world that you enter in. You don't just enter into an agreement or a spirit. It is a world. And they're there betting on you. But then when they see you, it's like, oh, hey, Truman. Mm -hmm. You know me? Well, I just didn't think you needed to use foul language. 
The Big Lebowski, same story. Hapless loser. Not, you know, and having people from out of nowhere come up to him and go, you know, the way you did this and that, brilliant. How could that man in the little Volkswagen who comes up to Lebowski about halfway through the movie uh, say it's brilliant the way he's playing both sides against the other, you're doing this, you're doing... how would he know? He said he's, he's, a, he's a dick, he's a detective, but he wouldn't have known all those things he said or the motives, calling Lebowski brilliant work. How would the uh, cowboy guy played by Sam Elliott uh, know to say to him, hey, dude, like he's watching him on TV? You know, do you have to use so many cuss words? How is it that they would look for him to be the patsy because he's some hapless loser and everyone else did, you know, and to blame all this stuff on him so they can get, you know, steal money from whoever and have him get the blame for it? You know, so what does that make him precisely? What is the world's view of people that uh, do not conform to their way and seeing all the other worlds and things that they're not allowed to talk about? Um, it's a some sort of loser. What do they do with that? Well, they use them for like target practice, set them up as patsies, set them up as go, go shoot up the school, uh, you know, uh, throw rocks at them, discredit them if they're a Christian, you know, to make sure that they never have a voice to say anything, etc., 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 etc. So who are these people and where, oh, where do they come from? And the answer is they've pa passed through to the other side, which is a world separate from this world. So no longer are they the people you went to school with. You see, they've become something else. And they're never going to be the same again. They're never going to be who they were. Although in old age, what happens is they get thrown out of this matrix thing and they're shown that they're not honchos, but they just basically wasted their lives. And many of them do repent on their deathbeds and things like that, so that's good. It's a hell of a thing, but it's the same in Pinocchio. When he ran out with the lost boys in Pinocchio, you know, it's the same, that same world. Criminal, it's criminal. They cover for each other, they rip off the people, they do bad things. They're agents of murder, agents of death, agents of darkness, every last one of them. Everyone who does conform becomes that. Only they look the other way on all that and say, but look at the goodies we got. Bottom line is, um, they're in a conundrum, and if they die in that, then they will be as if they never were. Of course, you know that whatever chance they had at bat, they would uh, forego that their fate is sealed right now. And all the games when they were younger that they played on people, teasing Truman, saying something that, you know, that only you could only know if you're watching them on TV, and saying something, how do you know that? Hearing some bit of piece of conversation of something that no one knows. Do they? I said that to someone in confidence, or that's some, how do you know that? Who are you? Well, they're watching you on TV, dude. They're watching you on closed circuit TV just as if they know everything about you. And you see, that's, they bet on you. Whether you will, whether you won't, whether you're going to get, who are you, you know? Are you going to, you know, hit the home run and you're going to just, are you going to be a survivor? Are you going to be a sole survivor and, and, and wreck the whole system? And what are you going to do? Well, the answer to that is Jesus is a sole survivor. So what do they do? Persecute Christians. When you become a Christian, if you're wrapped up in all that, you come out of there and, and you are separated by Christ, Jesus, and you are never to look back there again. You understand? That's like Lot's wife turning around towards Sodom and Gomorrah, became a pillar of salt. Don't do that. That's, you see, that's, that's the wrong idea that's like you know the american christian who's you know they're 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 in deep yet they have a a costume as a christian but not really because they're still affiliated
because, you know, they don't want people throwing rocks at them or making them an example or setting them up as a patsy or making them Truman on the Truman Show or the Big Lebowski or the Fool on the Hill or any of the rest of it. They want to be cool. They want to be liked. They don't want to be scorned and teased and mocked and humiliated. Who wants that? Now, you shouldn't bully and humiliate people and make fun of them and call them names and call them babies and dogs and and rough rough and all this stuff to mock and all that. You shouldn't do that. Don't you know you're going to have to pay for all that bullying? You're going to, that's all bullying, by the way. So your bullying and your gang stalking comes from this space, this place that I've just described to you. That's where they come from. And they know all this about you because they're watching you and they're gambling on you. And many of them, and some aren't, but I mean, they all know you. Yes, you're not paranoid. It's, it's a bizarre thing. But isn't that what you've experienced? Something along those lines? Something along those lines? How could they possibly? Unless they were tapped into another thing, unless there, unless there was a, unless you are on the Truman Show, that's the only way that you could explain it, uh, metaphorically, of course. But that kind of explains it, doesn't it? That's why that has such a resonance, that movie. And why do you think that movie exists? It exists to help you to help you understand what reality is. And um, I think, I thank God it's there. And the game and all, there's various clues out there. You know, but what they, they what, the reason they leave the clues is because they think, well, once you understand, you'll get the message and you'll come out. And coming out means passing through to the other side, which is, see, there's the mistaken cognition that they make. You don't make that. The reason you can't see that other world is because you have to have almost a kind of a really corrupted mind to see it. You know, like a criminal mind kind of, you know, just sort of a base kind of, you know, you want what you want and hell with everybody else kind of attitude. And that kind of qualifies you for that sort of thing. But make no mistake, their world, and it is a world, where they th they're having so much fun wrecking your life. They just can't stand it. Because you're such an idiot, you just don't get it. And if you did get it, you would have, you would have, have your soul scalped. You would die like they're dead. They're dead. They're coming from the realm of the dead. You see, any casual observer of stories would recognize that when you go to the other side of the river, that's the realm of Hades or death, you see? So the people that you really knew were before they made that crossing, the ones that are there now, they're no longer here because they're dead. But they come back like ghosts that are real and set up whole lives around you. But you're living alone in a house full of ghosts. And yes, they can see everything about you and they know everything about you and they can do whatever because they have supernatural powers of knowing all those things because they're in a hive mind and all that knowledge is there just like a computer. And so they're able to, to say things and know things about you or coalesce and become a, 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 a gas lighter or whatever, you know, around you and uh, or whatever the script is calling for, whatever the director off stage is calling for. And he can move th these pieces, the dead, the dead can be moved all around the board, including surrounding you. But those orders, that direction is coming from off stage. Got me? So it can drive you mad because it just shows that the world you think it is isn't at all. It's being manipulated by the people in another dimension who are seeing everything and knowing everything we do. And, you know, and all of us have done a lot of embarrassing things, have we not? And they can use that as a lever too, going, well, don't keep, you're not worthy of Jesus. Don't keep on with this. We see how you sin. We see what you do. You're a dirty blah, 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 blah. And not fit for the Lord. You haven't really repented. You haven't really done everything you could do with the Lord. You just, that's, that's your defense mechanism. Because you really don't want, because, you know, you're, you're, you, you don't want to lose your life. You don't want to join us because you don't want to lose what you have. If you want to remain a fool, fine. But, you know, you're no Christian, really. You know, you're no good. 
and all the you know cool people are here and they've done wrong like you but you know at least here you know you you're worthy of respect out there you're just they're, they're just gonna kick you in the teeth it's a cold world out there ooh cold cruel awful world you don't want to be a fool just throw your life away do you you know, you're already proved to be more like one of us anyway with the way you stand. <laughs> I'm not going to mention it, but, you know, you rival some of the best of us. I guess you're right. I don't want to be. I want to see what you see. You know, I know that you have to get into a hypnotic state to see it, but I want to see that other. I want to understand what you understand. I don't want to be a fool anymore. Count me in. Another one bites the dust, bum, bum, bum. Another one bites the dust. Oh no, what have I done? It's okay, man, you're, this is it, There's, it's permanent. You know, you've, you crossed the river, you're, you're no longer over there, and you can't go home. You're gonna have to do your best to make it with us. Okay. Now you can start by sweeping up over there. You know, you, you learn the ropes, you'll be moving up in no time. Oh, okay. Are we making ourselves abundantly clear? We. Oui. Je comprends. Um, I hate to put it that way. You know, I hate to be so raw and... I hate to, I mean, God, that's so awful the way I painted that. It's so nasty the way I just did that. I, I hate doing that. But when I long for my old childhood friends, the best I can do is hang out with a ghost who's being manipulated by others. Not my childhood friend anymore. And because I see what he's become. Mm. I don't want to go there. I need you, Lord. I need you to help me. I don't understand what kind of world I was born into. But it's really scary and I just can't make it without you. I just, Lord, please take me. I give you my life. I just let me be your will, Lord. In Jesus' name, let me be your will. I believe everything, the gospel, everything, Lord. Lord Jesus, enter me with your spirit. Fill me with your spirit. Lead me with your spirit. Have me. Let me do what you created me to do, what you wanted, everything you want. It's about you, not me, Lord. I just, I just please, please help me through this. I, this thing that I just described, I can't. I can't fathom it. I, it's just, I have never, it's, I, I can't. I, I need you, please, Lord. If you don't help me right now, I think it's just over. I just would be better off dead. You see? Do you see? what it is right now that's why when you're waiting for them to repent you know it's the same thing as waiting for the dead to rise I hate to say it like that you want your I know it's a death factory it's a soul scalping factory they take you into death, you see. I mean, they say that, well, they can make you a rock star, make you sing like so-and-so, or give you powers to, you know, real tear it up, baby, you know, be successful. But even that, it's a ghost running around, you know. The, the ghost is getting the accolades, and the living person is getting the punishment because you wound up in the opposite of everything you thought, that... Reality was is 180 degrees opposite of everything that you thought. Everything you thought is wrong. 
Everything you believed about your world is wrong. Everything that you believed about this life is wrong. Now do you understand why you need a savior? Why, unless you have the strongest force of all, they will crush you. If you try to fight this gang stalking without God, because see, it, it's not just gang stalking, it's everything. So if you try to fight everything without God, it will crush you. When I say with God, I mean left Lord, right Lord, straight, what do we do? Well, what's going on today? Hello, Lord, you've beautiful rain. Thank you so much for the beautiful weather. I, I mean to look at it more. I've been buried in the studio and I don't feel I've really given you the appreciation that I could. I, let me do that now, Father. What should I eat? What should I wear? What should I do? Should I say yes or no to this one or that one or this thing or that thing? That's what I mean by being one of his. It's, it's just like that. Every decision, every move, everything is all in concert with the Lord, with God. And that's the only way you're going to survive this. Well, because if in your own mind, you might turn right instead of left when yeah, you, 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 you've, you've got to have that help. You see, they've got it. They've got the whole power there. They're pretty much invincible. You saw that with, with Obama, he needed a, he needed a, you know, an event, and boom, damn, event happened and pivots off this, uh, you know, his political debacle in the Middle East or... Yeah, in Syria. I mean, he, uh, bada bing, bada boom, just like that. And things like that can't happen in a real, in the world you think you're in, things like that just would never happen, that kind of thing. But in the real world that you haven't accepted yet, things like that happen all the time. I mean, it's 100% like that because it's being manipulated by another world that you don't know about. And that's why they know everything about you because they're coming from that world and they all have a hive mind so they, it's like a network and so they, they're they watching you on the network and so they have watched you from a distance but they know who your mother is, who your father is, they know your kids, they know your you know you, what you choose, what you don't choose, what you like at the store, what you don't. They could, if they wanted to mess around with your head, they could easily do it by saying all these things that only you would know and have a loose conversation around you talking about you in the third person about things that only you know. And then they expect, and they, what they gamble on is will you stay at whatever place it is, say it's, a bar, a bar, let's say it's Whole Foods, will you continue your shopping or will you flee? And they'll bet some serious money on that. Will that bother them or will they be able to grok it with their God, would that God help them And now? Or will they be strong enough to just go, huh, and, 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 and piss it away like nothing? Wow, look at that. That's courage, man. I would have been freaked out and running down the street, tearing my hair out, but look at this. Toe to toe with them. Ah, okay. Yeah, and, and whoever bet on that gets the big money because usually they fold. Can't fight it on your own. Look at that. He walks in. I'll give you a quote from somebody who used to sabotage my van. Look at that. Uh, you know, walks around, Santa Fe. Look at that. <laughs> Completely crazy. Nobody bats an eye. He's talking you know, kind of like a third person, he's referring to me. Completely crazy, nobody bats an eye because everybody knows. It's very simple. The world that they're coming from is the world of the damned, the world of the lifeless, 
And that's why they know who you are, because they have to feed on you. And the only way they can feed on you is to traumatize you. And then they do gamble too, but then they feed, that's how they feed. You're in a very bad situation, understand? You know, being food for them. And food, it's food for the aliens, basically. Have we uh, nailed it? It's really sad. You might go back to God and say, God, why'd you put me here? This isn't like, you know, Disneyland, like I thought it was. It's, it's uh, there's this whole other thing going on. Yes, but now do you feel bad about being my son? No, I don't feel bad. I'm not the son of the devil. I, I wouldn't make it over there. They would make me their slave, and I would just be in the pig fields, you know, doing picking up the, the, the poop, and that's about as high as I could go in their world, yes. Like all my prodigal sons and daughters. So come home. They can come home, Lord, right? Absolutely, they can come home. They know it. They can come back from the dead. That's why Jesus raised Lazarus. It was because he proved it could be done. It was a metaphor for this. Yes, well, it is today. They can come back. My childhood friend could come back. Yes, but only in Christ. No other way back. Wow. They say that they're on the side of the source. And they're the ones, you know, getting back is being one of them. Yes, they misuse the language and make it double-double uh, and then they reverse it. So getting back to the source, getting back to where you once belonged, Jojo, to them means that side, not my side. Oh. Oh, they were mocking you with that song. Oh, yes. They mock a lot. What are you going to do with them? It's really the question is, what are they going to do with themselves? They can't win where they are now. They can only keep running around this illusory track, you know, pretending to be who they're not. Being elite, being above everybody, looking down on people living in their elite hovels, whatever, believing that they're superior beings when, if you want to know the truth, son, they, they're not here at all. They're not here? How is it they're not here, Lord? Because <laughs> when you're there, you're not here. And when you're here, you're not there. You can't be in both places at the same time. Well, of course I know that. I, I, I yeah, okay, all right. A choice must be made. And no choice. No, no choice equals a lot of pain because they, they hunt for souls, for the intact, for the living. Okay, Lord, how many living are there? Many. How many of them are there? Many. But the wheat and the tares grow together. So there's an equilibrium, a balance. Yes, absolutely. So they hunt for souls. They hunt for the living because otherwise they would perish. Well, how's that a good deal then? Well, if you're meant to be there, it can be a very good deal because you have this illusion of you, you know, winning the race and being number one and having people fawn all over you and take your picture and they like it, they want it. They want to be in the limelight. But the world will never accept one in the limelight who isn't part of that, who isn't on that side. They won't do it. Because you see, the world loves, you know, that kind of cool guy. You hear the thunder, ladies and gentlemen? Like no thunder I have ever heard. God is here. Well, 
that's the download of the century then because I've never heard a broadcast anywhere in the world ever that did what this one just did, whatever. I don't even know what to call it. It's the situation you're in where they're trying to pick you off and pick on you and follow you and know things they should not know about you and mess with you. And what are you going to do about it? It's like on the prison yard, you know, they, they, the new kid comes in, they start picking up, see what he's made of. Is he going to fight or become someone's bitch, you know what I mean? And they're going to, or just be a, a cannon fodder, just, just go ahead and kill him just for fun or just for a sacrifice. And what are we going to do? What do we got here? And uh, so, you know, you, if you're in that pickle, then, you know, going to the group meetings about gang side that might be nice because they're not keeping you separated from other people in the gang stalking thing. And the gang stalking thing is just a window into the entire thing, which is all reality, which is what we face here, every human being on earth. And um, basically you're in the valley of decision until you make a decision, they're going to throw rocks at you to make you jump one way or the other. They're going to gamble on whether you do or whether you don't and whether you will be a fool the rest of your life, or whether you will know what they know. In other words, you'll know about other people that are, are innocent, pure heart ones, walking around, not knowing anything. You'll be able to scare them. Because you, you've been betting on them. You've been following them. They don't know it. Because it's all part of something that, uh, that no one should know about anyway, that exists, but then it doesn't really exist. And that's the thing that's scaring the, the crap out of you. Plus, you don't like being ridiculed. Uh, nobody does. And along with uh, all of the gang stalking can be summed up in one word. Bullying. And what are they bullying you to do? They're bullying you to, you know, get scalped, be a sacrifice, you know, be something. They're trying to move you one way or the other, any way they can. They can move you one way into trauma, then they can feed. Move you another way to join them, then, then they get uh, a credit for that. You know, they get another soul on Satan's side. How many of them are there? Well, there's been a lot of damage. You know, I would say the terrors are more prevalent than the wheat. But see, people underestimate how much wheat there is. You see, when you're wheat, you're... You know, a, a true pure heart is, doesn't, it, none of that registers ever. That they don't, it's never a proposition of will they or won't they. They are what they are, and so they become targets, you know. And that's why they say only the good die young, right? The young are mainly innocent, right? Only the good die young. You know, that's kind of what that statement means. It's all cryptic because no one's ever, you know, it's right in your face and no one ever says anything about it. Why? Because they're worried they're going to lose money. They're going to lose money or be docked for having said something. You know, the main thing you have to do when you dance with the devil is you have to make sure that he doesn't exist for other out there in the consciousness, that it's just a myth. And so that's what they pay. Look, when you're in the realm of the dead, you're just a ghost here. You're not real here. But the ghosts are the people running the show. So, okay, so... I'm just trying to tell you, you're in the right spot. You're in the right thing. They're going to tell you you're in the wrong thing. You're in the wrong spot. You're a fool. You're an idiot. That's absolutely false. That's all. Those are all lies. The smart ones are the ones that go with the Lord. The stupid ones are the ones that go with the devil thinking they're going to get a free handout. And, uh, you know, ain't nothing for free, baby. Ain't nothing for free. Understand that. You go over there, you're going to have to sow to the thing. With God, you're going to have to put your shoulder to the plow too. Ain't nothing for free. you got to carry a cross. And yes, they will mock you, bully you, laugh at you, humiliate you. They did so to Jesus. You ain't above your master. I'm going to do so to you. But what, why, do, why do we suffer for Christ? Why do, we, why do we subject ourselves to that kind of thing? Because we want to live. And it's the only way we can. 
And, you know, maybe we're paying for something we did in another life. I don't know. I don't know what this is, why we're here exactly, except to serve the Lord. But I don't know why all this elaborate movie set and, you know, why all this elaborate stuff. I don't know why. But I do know one thing. It comes down to you and what you will do and what you won't do. And, yes, they are going to gamble on it. They want to gamble whether you whether you stay the course or whether you're going to give up and join them and cash in. <laughs>